imagine this. You're at home, minding your own business, watching TV with your family, and you get a random phone call from someone out of state telling you that someone has stolen your identity and they're trying to rent a home in your name. This is one of the biggest secrets that the credit reporting agencies do not want you to know. Used her stolen identity not once, but at least six times trying to rent a home. Investigators finally made an arrest this week. So what do you do if your information has been successfully stolen? Meaning your identity is being used to apply for credit cards, home loans, car loans. This is a huge problem in the United States, but nobody wants to tell you how to handle the situation and why the credit reporting agencies don't want to help you if you go through this problems now dealing with credit issues feeling violated and fearful worried about what could come next the fear and the unknown of where this leak came from this is a huge problem going on in the United States where identities are being stolen every single day and the credit reporting agencies are not doing enough to protect you. Then you have another growing problem where the credit repair industry is destroying the disputing process. So when you actually send a letter to the credit reporting agencies, letting them know that your identity has been stolen, they don't believe you because there's so many credit repair scammers out there that are submitting false documents and false information. So now the credit reporting agencies, the creditors, nobody knows who to believe. So in today's episode, I'm going to cover a very important topic on what to do if your identity gets stolen, how to stop them, and how to battle it out with the credit reporting agencies. And there's going to be a huge tip in this video also that you do not want to miss because even if your identity has not been stolen, there's something else even bigger that consumers do not know about their credit reports. Part one is going to be how to stop someone from stealing your identity. In part two, I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to actually let the credit reporting agencies agencies know and the creditors know that your identity has been stolen the official way on how to get this done properly there's also going to be a bonus at the end that you do not want to miss because it is going to be super valuable to anybody let's get into the rest of this video because we got a lot of ground to cover so part one how do we stop them in their tracks if they are in fact trying to steal your identity or someone has stolen your identity rule number one you need to pull your credit reports immediately from annualcreditreport.com again get your credit reports from annual credit report.com you can get your credit reports for free once a week that's right not once a year but once a week the rules have changed you need to go over your credit reports from top to bottom to make sure that everything on your credit report is actually and factually yours and all of your accounts and that someone else has not opened up an account in your name then you want to put a security freeze on your Experian Equifax and TransUnion credit report that is 100% free all you have to do is log into each one of those Experian Equifax and TransUnion or Google freeze my TransUnion credit report freeze my Equifax credit report and freeze my Experian credit report those are going to be 100% free you do not have to pay to do that with any of those credit reporting agencies you freeze it and once you freeze it they cannot access your credit reports any longer if you're seeing some type of crazy activity where there's a bunch of hard inquiries coming through in through your actual credit reports and let's say for instance uh, you're using credit karma because a lot of people like to use it because it's free and it's letting you know hey there's been a hard inquiry and it wasn't you then you need to go immediately and lock your credit reports don't wait go lock them immediately because the longer you wait the more that they can actually take because in all reality a lot of consumers believe that oh it's not a big deal I should just leave my credit reports open so I can apply whenever I want to it literally takes you a matter of minutes to freeze your credit reports and keep them safe if you don't have them frozen and you're not actually applying for any credit why would you have them wide open for anybody to take because because it's very simple for there to be a data breach with any company that you're signed up with and your information is sold on the dark web and now before you know it you're in over your head and your identity has been stolen and people are getting cars homes and credit cards in your name and this is going to be a bigger problem for you because again like I said it's harder to deal with the credit reporting agencies than ever before now part two where do we go what do we do if your identity has been stolen before I get into this I want you to understand very clearly the credit reporting agencies are not your friends they're not here to help you because they want to keep you down as a subprime borrower the lower they can keep your credit score the more valuable that you are to them because they sell your data to subprime lending companies those companies pay them millions of dollars this is what we call big data this is being sold every single day
day across Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. This is how they make their money. They don't make money from selling you credit reports. They don't make money from selling you your actual credit scores. They make money from selling your personal information to other companies. They buy it and then they offer you stuff. How do you think you get offers in your actual email about credit cards and about auto loans and about insurance rates? All of those are coming from the direct source that you gave them access to your credit reports and now they're selling your information and now these companies are bartering for your business. Last part's the most important. So in step number one, if your identity has been stolen, you need to immediately report it to your local police department. Now it doesn't matter if it was a family member, you're, listen, I've even heard crazy cases where a husband or a wife has taken the identity of their significant other and opened up credit cards and accounts in their names and they were never aware of it. It happens every day. Children's identities get stolen by their parents. That happens more than you can ever imagine. So if that happens, you need to file a police report stating your identity was stolen. And what you need to do in that police report is include the account numbers of the actual account that's on your credit report that's not yours, the actual name of the company, and the amount. Include all of that information on your local police report. It doesn't matter how long it's been. Don't let any police department let tell you that, oh, well, it's been, you know, three months or, oh, it's been three years. Because a lot of consumers don't understand what they need to do if their identity has been stolen. So they just leave it at, at bay until they actually actually need their credit and then that becomes a bigger problem. So there is no time constraint for you to report that your identity was stolen. File that local police report immediately as fast as you possibly can. Now step two, once you get your actual local police report, then you need to go to the FTC website and file an FTC identity theft report affidavit. I'm going to put the link in the video description and I'm going to pin at the very top of the comments for the FTC identity theft website. Once you get to that website it's going to ask you to go ahead and start right there you hit the get started button once you get there it's going to ask you what type of identity theft issue you may you may potentially have you choose the one that best fits you and then you move forward once you move forward it's going to ask you a bunch of different questions you want to make sure that you submit and attach that local police report that you got from your local police department to your FTC affidavit this is called an affidavit because it is a statement that you are stating that this did in fact happen once you get your FTC report you want to print it out you want to save an actual PDF document never ever get rid of this because this is very important to have this you're going to get that print it out save it in PDF and then you're going to create a very simple letter for the credit reporting agencies and the creditors remember this is very important that you save all of these copies and you have digital copies also in case you need them and understand if you do this and you were not a victim of identity theft that is perjury and that is a federal offense and you can and will be held accountable by the US government for this. So understand, all you out there that are running scams and running plays out there, scamming companies, you're gonna get caught. Believe me, the FTC is not playing and neither is the US government anymore and neither are these creditors if they find out that you were lying. You're going to type up a very simple letter that you're going to send to the all three credit reporting agencies, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, and you're also going to send it to the creditors, the companies that have the actual open accounts in your name. It's going to simply state, I was a victim of identity theft on this specific date. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to supply you with the local police report, the FTC affidavit, affidavit, if I could say that right, and I want these items deleted from my credit report effective immediately. They are damaging my credit and they are not my account. You want to make sure that you sign it, you date it, and you attach a copy of your driver's license, a copy of your actual utility bill, and if you feel comfortable, a copy of your social security card. And you want to get this notarized by your actual local bank for 100% free, or if you know somebody else, I can get it notarized for you because getting it notarized shows them that this is not a game and you are not playing and this is serious. Once you get that all put together, you're gonna to put it together and you're going to mail it certified mail with return receipt so you have proof that you sent it and they actually received it. Because if the credit reporting agencies do not delete these items and they do not respond to you, that's an immediate lawsuit after just one simple round of letters letting them know that you they did not take any action and you prove to them that your identity was in fact stolen. Now again, if you were in fact a victim of identity theft and the credit reporting agencies did absolutely nothing, 
nothing and they ignored your letters and the creditors also did nothing, then you need to reach out to my company. The link is going to be in the description of this video and pinned at the top of the comments. We will get you in contact with attorneys as fast as we possibly can to get the ball rolling to stop this identity theft and hold the credit reporting agencies accountable and the creditors because if they don't do anything, they're going to get sued. Now, here is the bonus part of this video. I want you to look at your credit reports very explicitly and very closely. And I want you to look at your names, your actual date of birth and your social security number. The two very important things are your social security number and your date of birth. If your social security number is not yours on your credit report and your date of birth is not yours, you may also be a victim of what we call a mixed file. They may have potentially mixed your file up with somebody else's. And this happens a lot with a, a father and a son that is actually a junior from his son. They mix up credit files all the time. And a an easy way to fix it is to send a simple letter to the credit reporting agency letting them know, hey, this is not my information. It is not accurate. It's not complete. This is not me. Delete it from my credit report immediately. After one round, if they don't do that, then you have a, an actual mixed file case and we can connect you with an actual attorney that can take care of that. Or if you don't want to even send the letter, let the attorneys handle it. They'll do it for you also. That is what the whole purpose of the actual attorney program. But again, look at your credit reports directly from annualcreditreport.com. Not any credit reporting agency. You want to go directly to the source with annualcreditreport.com and look at your name, your date of birth, and your actual social security number. If there's a different social security number on there and a different date of birth, then you are a victim of a mixed file. And you need to contact us immediately so we can help you or you can do it on your own and send out those very simple letters if you choose to also. So I hope you enjoyed this video. We covered a lot on identity theft and mixed files. Make sure that you watch the next video because it is about some other credit repair issues that you may not know about. Now, if there's anything else specific you want me to talk about, drop it in the comment section, drop some comments in there so we can get this video going and we can actually make a topic based on whatever you're talking about because it's all about you, our community. We cannot do it without you and I cannot thank you enough. Now, if you felt that I brought you some value in this video, make sure that you don't forget and subscribe to increase your credit score.